can't go up at this work site and be like, where's this person? Where's this person? Did I want them there? Hell yeah. Nigga, my job was to go play that role, do it to the best of my ability, and bring that motherfucker back home for the culture. And guess what me and Lil Yachty did? Nigga, we bought 988,000 people to sit their ass down and watch that movie, man. <laughs> How high to? The movie ain't even worth getting mad about. It's not. It leaves you irritated more than anything. It was always gonna fail. You know, it, it didn't help that it was a sequel that nobody asked for. Plus, Method and Red Man wasn't even invited. When you look at it up and down, it's a TV movie that's gonna be forgotten in a year. And it was forgotten. So, I'm gonna spoil the movie right now, cause let's be honest, ain't nobody gonna watch it. Y'all not gonna watch it. Cool, let's get it. So we got Little Yachty and DC Young Fly as two cousins living with Yachty's mom in the basement. With no money and no future, they stumble upon the weed bible. The book comes with instructions on how to grow super weed. It comes with a seed to start growing and a blunt tip to the cover, which has been sitting there uncovered in dust. Regardless, as stoners do, they smoke it and they fall into another world where they meet Mike Epps character and his hype man who tells them to grow the weed and sell it. With Atlanta having a super limited bus supply, Yachty and DC become the top dealers in the town, putting their former plug and next door neighbor Big Bang out of business. The cousins come home one day to find their place ransacked and the Bible stolen. They question Big Bang whose blunt smells very familiar. Big Bang says I got it from somebody else, which leads Yachty and DC to roam the city and find out who stole their stuff. They start at their old high school, they question the teacher who's smoking their bud, and they escape after running with the principal. So when you smoke the super weed, it gives you like powers or enhanced abilities. Think of uh, Bradley Cooper and Limitless. It's really stupid. Just, just go with it. They escape by hanging onto the back of a school bus. And instead of just letting go once they get down the street, they ride it for who knows how many miles to a school field trip. Now we are at Verdant the evil corporation with the woke CEO and Achiever. And just remember, don't do drugs. Unless, of course, they're one of ours. <laughs> I'm kidding. I am kidding. Okay. Here's where Yachty's love interest joins the search. Yes, that's what I'm calling her, because that's basically all she is in the movie. Yachty lies about them being chaperones so he can get close to her. DC pieces out to go find somewhere to smoke. And instead of just going outside, he walks into a restricted area where he sees something that he wasn't supposed to see. This almost gets them arrested until Love Interest vouches for him, and then they're off to the next place, which is a strip club run by Russian gangsters. This is also a strip club with no titties because this is a TV movie. This is where they meet the female owner, Ivanov. They all get high and start speaking Russian. Uh, Ivanov's bodyguard gives him the next lead, and in exchange for the information, I want her. Me? You are classy hot. Not like other girls. I want to see you dance. They then escape after love interest pretends to do a dance, and Roundhouse kicks the shit out of Ivanov. Next up is a frat party where DC gets caught up in a stepping routine. He fucks up and he spills the ashes of their founding brother. This leads to a chase sequence where they find out who they think is the source is the white guy that they sold weed to earlier. So then he spills the beans that he actually bought the weed from Big Bang. What a twist! Yeah, we already knew that. That's not, that wasn't a secret. They go and confront Big Bang who admits, yeah, I took it. So how did he get it? Turns out that he was banging little Yachty's mom. And she told him to steal it because she wanted Yachty out of the gang. Oh, but out that gang. Off the gang. Oh, but out that gang. I didn't understand her here. Either way, she fucked him over. Big Bang tells him that he already sold the rest of the weed and the Bible, leading them back to the evil corporation. They confront Anna, who goes for Dr. Evil and reveals her entire plan for no reason. Now, up to this point, the movie was tolerable. I wasn't really enjoying it but it didn't bother me either until i heard this evil plan her plan is she bought all the weed in atlanta all of it so that the streets are completely dry so smokers will be forced to buy five her shitty vape pens that got nasty side effects <laughs> i know smokers that would drive 12 miles for an eighth who would rather smoke a uh, black and mild than smoke some nasty ass vape pens 
You gotta be out your fucking mind to think this will work. You, you, oh my god. Then she reveals how she got the Bible. It was brought to her by her assistant. Hayes! <laughs> what a twist! Hayes? Who's Hayes? Oh yeah. The white guy who had two scenes in the beginning and then vanished. So you know he had something to do with it. So Yadi and Love Interest have a fallout because that's in the script and that needs to happen. Down on his luck, Yadi smokes the last little bit of his super weed and Mike Epps comes back for another twist. They didn't have superpowers, they was just high. What a twist! So with a little motivation, Yadi and DC come up with a plan to get their weed back, stop Fi, and take down Anna for good. For help, they call everyone they sold weed to earlier in the movie. This includes love interest because it's about time for them to get back together in the script. They crash the fire premiere event, expose Anna by showing hidden video footage of her talking about her plan. She's chased off by security, the day is saved, and Black Gangster performs because why not? A few months later, we see Yachty has started up his snack business that he mentioned earlier in the movie. He's rich, living his best life, and dating love interests. Happy ending! And the movie ends with a shot stolen right out of Back to the Future. Whack. Little Yachty ain't got no business being in this movie. For the one reason, and that's the same reason that people blasted him when it was announced that he was one of the leads for this movie. He does not smoke weed. And that's a cardinal sin when you're making a stoner movie. And it's hilarious because you never see him smoking anything. He'll hold the blunt, pass the blunt, but won't smoke it because there ain't nobody else they could have got for this movie. DC was kind of annoying. People call him the discount Chris Tucker, which I think is kind of mean, but you really see it full force in this movie. He's just so animated and over the top. God damn it! And he do unnecessary shit in the movie. Like when he walks into that restricted area instead of just going outside. Even back at the high school, he wears this hat. This dumbass hat that he did not have one in the previous scene, but he wears it for no other reason so that the principal can find it and go kick DC's ass because DC banged his wife at school a few years ago. So stupid. The callbacks and the cameos don't make any sense. So How High 2 was written by Dustin Lee Abraham who wrote the first one and you can tell because he borrowed so much from that script. I mentioned Mike Epps earlier in the movie, but not by his character name. That's because he comes back as Baby Powder, a pimp from the first one. Now I told you everything was a hallucination, so why is Yachty seeing this pimp in his visions? He even sees I Need Money in the strip club, who's now I Got Money, and then he vanishes. Then there's another callback at the frat party when DC spilled the ashes. After the chase, they come back a few minutes later to find a couple of the frat guys smoking their brother's ashes off the floor and then they see his ghost. That smoking dead people really works. That's not cool. At least Method Man had the respect to fertilize his man before smoking him. Y'all niggas is nasty. I was gonna talk trash on the CGI, but y'all see this shit. It's terrible. Look at this screen effect. Like, come on, man. Did nobody at MTV have a smoke machine? Or was that not in the budget? Did you spend it all on Black Youngster? Oh, and one more thing I found funny for the wrong reason. So, during that chase scene in the frat house, they run down the steps and go door to door trying to find somewhere to hide. So they go to the left, then to the right, then back to the right. Oh, they used the same shot twice. And you can tell because you can see the same two guys walking down the steps behind them. I can go on and on, but I'm going to just stop here. The biggest problem for me with this movie is that it's very toned down. Like the comedy is the kind of shit you see on YouTube now. I think they're trying to appeal to like the basic idiot you see on most because it's definitely not for stoners. It's, it's not. They recycle ideas from a better movie and all the original ideas are here to miss. And while the two leads may have good chemistry, they're just not Method and Red Man. And that's how high too. Nothing you need to go out of your way to see. It's just going to exist at that five dollar bargain bin sitting in Walmart. You know what's funny though? This ain't even the worst stoner comedy I ever seen.